Welcome to the Logistics Point interviews. I'm Nick Bujouf. Today, I'm joined by Drik Arons, who is the technical manager for the Smart Freight Center, an NGO that is helping logistics and supply chain companies with their uh, sustainability goals. Rick, thank you very much for joining me. And today we are talking about fuel. And one of the first things when it comes to fuel and low emission fuel in specific is what are the different types of low emission fuels and how can companies choose the one that best suits their needs? Yeah, hi Nick, and uh, glad to be to having this interview with you here today and uh, glad to have, speak to you today about the low emission fuels and, and, and the different technologies and, that are out there. Um, let me start by saying that, there are, that there's not a single solution here about the low emission fuels. There's actually quite a wide range of different fuels that exist, um, ranging from the different biofuels that are being produced from, uh, from different feedstocks to electric and hydrogen solutions, um, depending also on, on the mode of transport, but also depending on the, yeah, the solution that's currently available or going to be available in the, in the longer future. And how can companies choose out of all of these things? What do you think will be the one that really is, is the most important factor for companies when they're choosing? Well, there's, of course, by definition, it's, it's going to be the cost of, of, uh, of those things. And then look at those in an element from a total cost of ownership concept. But we want to, at Smart Freight Center, we want to put something next to it effectively. And, and this is what we call the total emissions of ownership. Um, which is exactly the concept where you, when you talk about the lifetime of operating a certain vehicle, you have a certain cost associated to it, but also set against this, the total emissions of this, so that you actually can make a comparison in terms of what the cost uh, of the emissions are going to look like um, over the operation of the lifetime and be able to decide accordingly. When we're talking about low emission fuels, what are the biggest misconceptions? The, the biggest misconceptions, I, I think, is that it is a, uh, a too far away, not important, not, not necessarily needed by me. It's something that's going to happen for everyone. And if you don't invest in it kind of in the now or in the very near future, um, it's going to be a very costly affair for you. Um, and you can see it happening with the European Union uh, Fit for 55, for instance, scope uh, legislation. Um, carbon pricings will go up and you will have to pay for the carbon costs of your emissions in one way or another. Um, and therefore, investing in the right in, in different technologies already at this point in time can pay out in the longer run. And you mentioned the European Union and authorities have a big part to play when it comes to low emissions and sustainability. What is their role, do you think, in, in this when it comes to low emission fuels? The, the biggest hurdle at the moment in one of those low emission fuels is that the costs are still higher than the other ones. Um, so if you compare a, a diesel truck to an electric truck, the, the capital investment cost is significantly higher for an electric truck. Um, so helping through subsidies and, and, and making clear that the roadmap for the longer run, um, that electric trucks will still be beneficial in the longer run, is something that is very much needed by, the, by countries and governments to support. And where can organizations find a bit more information or support when it comes to switching to low emission fuels? And here, I guess in particular, what is the role that you as a smart freight center how can you help them? Yeah, so well, one of the, the main elements is, of course, understanding where your emissions come from and understanding how your emission profile looks like now. And this is where we have introduced uh, in 2016 and refreshed in 2019 already the GLEC framework, which is the, the and also the GLEC partnership community, which is really a community where we can debate and discuss all these different solutions. Um, and also set out how do you calculate and report your emissions accordingly. Because there's a lot of misconception, coming back to your original question, actually, there's also a lot of misconception about um, which fuels are really sustainable. Um, and there are certain fuels out there that are being presented as being more sustainable, but are in effect are actually increasing your emissions. So making sure that you choose the right fuel, so to say, and therefore making sure that you actually reduce your emissions is something that we help guide companies through industry standard guidelines, 
um, and debating this in different forums with the GLAC members. How the fuel has been produced and where it comes from is, is quite essential in understanding um, to actually understand how much of you decarbonizing your logistics. If you use a fuel which is being produced from uh, a crop-based um, fuel, or you're producing hydrogen through natural gas, you're actually increasing your emissions. Whilst if you use it from a waste-based product, for instance, for your biofuels, you actually can reduce your emissions by, by 80 to 85%. Finally, you mentioned how everyone has to do it sooner or later. Do you think that it will take us a long time to move forward or do we have do, do we even have the time? Can we wait? I, I was, it, it, it is actually becoming quite urgent. If, if you look back, and, and I, I just want to make this example, which we, we did with the different companies and different organizations. If you look at 2050, and you take that as the target year, you want to be net zero, and you operate a vehicle for, say, about 10 years, and then we talk about 2040 already, that you, you want to have the last vehicle sold with a combustion engine. Mm -hmm. And then looking at the technology where it stands today, um, especially with heavy duty trucks, um, some of them serious productions is only going to take place in 2025, 2030 in that range. So that means that you have, have effectively 10 years to really transition all of the road freight vehicles from the classic combustion engine to the new, new zero emission technology um, from hydrogen and, and electric vehicles. Um, that's also why it's needed to have kind of intermediate solution and transition solutions already put in place today, because otherwise you won't make your targets for 2030, for instance. Um, that we, I think everyone is looking at this as we speak and, and, and where we talk about this in, in, we're talking now August 2021 or September 2021. Um, it is fundamentally different already than from January this year, and, and we see the shift increasingly and the more carriers and the more organizations look into how can we reduce our emissions uh, today rather than tomorrow. Well, thank you very much for your time and thank to our viewers. If you want to learn more about low emission fuels, you can find more in the description down below.